video that I'm showing you today is about credibility of sources. Now what I mean by this is when you're doing research for a project, you need to find sources online that are credible, believable. You can trust them. You can't just choose any website or article that you find online and say, here's a good source for my research paper. You have to choose sources that we can trust, that we can believe. You might be asking, if you're writing a research paper, why do we have to do research? Why do we need sources? Well, there are a few reasons for that. You can have your own original opinions and ideas, of course, but they have to be based on research. You have to give some kind of research to show that other experts and researchers have had similar ideas to you. So that it's not just you. You, by yourself, your ideas don't mean a whole lot. But if you can show that other people with real degrees and definite credentials have had the same ideas or have had similar ideas, that really makes your research a lot more valid and credible. Your ideas, then, will be more respected. So, so the first step. Before you begin doing research, you have to consider two important things. First of all, you have to consider the type of assignment that you're working on. What kind of research are you going to be looking for? Are you simply telling a story? Is that part of what you need? Do you need research that will help you tell a story, as an example, reporting what happened, basically? Then you might want to go to a news website that would tell you exactly what happened on a particular day. Do you need people's opinions? Perhaps you are offering your opinion on a topic, and you need to gather other people's opinions to support your ideas. Perhaps you're just presenting some research. You've been given a topic that you would like to talk about, maybe, I don't know, global warming, and you just need to find some research that people have done on global warming and talk about what people know, the facts, the statistics. These are different kinds of research that you might be doing, so you're going to be looking for different kinds of articles. You need to know this before you begin. The second thing you need to consider is the scope of your assignment. Think about who you are writing to. Who is your audience? Any time you give a presentation or you write an essay, you have an audience. Of course, your audience is your teacher who reads the essay or listens to the presentation and gives you a grade. But you also have an imaginary audience, other people who might possibly listen to your presentation or read your essay. So who are you creating your assignment for? Perhaps it's for a global audience, meaning that anybody could be reading your essay or watching your presentation. Perhaps it's a more limited audience. You're writing specifically to one person or a group of people. This is also important to consider when determining what research to use. You need to decide what will be the most useful, helpful research for your audience. The next step, you need to consider what research is reliable. When you're checking websites, anybody can post anything on the internet. So the problem is it's very difficult sometimes to tell if the research you've found is reliable. Here are a few things you might want to look for on a website or an online article to make sure that you've found a reliable source. The first thing is that the article ought to have an author. If it doesn't have an author, it probably is not a reliable source. Your article should have a clear author's name, written at the beginning of the article or at the end. Most websites, if they're reliable, will give you additional information about the author. Sometimes you can click on the author's name and find more information. Sometimes you can search for that author on the website and find more information about them. They'll usually tell you a little bit about them so you know more about your author and you know why you can trust this author. You also should be able to recognize that the website is a well-known trusted organization. Okay, if you're working with a website that you've never heard of before, that just seems to be some sort of basic .com website, but you don't know this organization at all, then it's probably not very reliable. On the other hand, if it's a website for a respected newspaper in the United States, or a TV program that everyone knows really well, or a university website, these are organizations that we trust, so the article, therefore, can be trusted. Usually, a reliable article will also have a date when it was published. This is another thing that lets you know that you've probably found a reliable source. 
The final thing you need to look for is the purpose of the website. Is this a website created to inform people? If it is, if it's a website created to inform people, to give people information, then it's probably a reliable website. Some websites, however, look like they're trying to give you information, but actually they're just trying to sell you something. They give you the information so that you'll want to buy their product. This is not a reliable website. You cannot trust a website when the people are just trying to sell you a product. Now, it's important to keep in mind that you may find a reliable source that doesn't have some of this information. For instance, you might find a reliable source without an author's name. Especially if you were looking at, say, a university website. You might find a good article on a university website without an author's name. As long as you know that the website is linked to a well-known, trusted organization, then it's okay that there's not an author's name. But in general, most reliable, respectable websites should include all of this information. Now I want to give you a few examples of some unreliable websites, and then give you an example of a reliable website so you can see the difference. Let's imagine that you're writing an essay on obesity, and you have to do a little research on obesity to support your ideas, and you find this article online. We're going to go visit it now. So you go online and you look at this website. Now you're thinking this is perfect because you wanted to write about some of the causes of obesity, and the name of this article is Causes of Obesity, so it seems great. You look at it, you find some interesting information, the problems are clearly listed, it looks like a great resource. But let's talk about why it's not so reliable. First of all, there's no author on that website. If you look at the website, there was no author listed. There's no date listed. Also, if you read further down in the website, it appears that the website is selling some kind of weight loss program. And Ann Collins, who, that's the name of the website, the name of the website is anncollins.com. I don't know who she is. She's not anyone who's trusted. You could Google her, I suppose, to find out, but I'm not really sure what you would find if you Google her. Let's go back to this website. Look at all of the advertisements that you see in the middle of the article. Again, a clear indication that you haven't found a reliable website. Very, uh, if you look down at the bottom, you see here, Ann Collins Obesity Reduction Program. So after you've read this article talking about the causes of obesity, then she tries to sell you a diet program. So clearly, this is not a reliable website. Let's look at another reliable, another unreliable website. This is an article that you find about uh, diet tips for seniors, how people who are a little older can stay healthy. Now this website, when you look at it, it seems a little bit better. It's in the health and wellness section of Suite 101. It has an author. Look, Eve Lopez, we know who the author is. It has a date. These things seem very promising. We can even click on the author's name and find out information about her. See, Eve Lopez, we've got more information about her. Now here's what's interesting. This is still not a reliable site. If you read right here, in our bio about Eve Lopez, you'll see this. She recently fled the dot-com world to become a TESOL instructor and freelance writer. So what does she do for a living? She teaches English as a second language, like me. And yet she's writing an article about health and diet tips. I don't know what makes an ESL teacher qualified to give health advice to older people. She has no qualifications to give that advice. This is clearly not a reliable site. Also, Suite 101, if you're not familiar with this website, is a website that allows anyone to write. They pay people to write, and uh, so you can apply if you want to, to write for this website and make a little bit of money. And, um, but because people are getting paid to write articles about anything they want to, you really can't trust the information that they provide on Suite 101. Finally, let me show you a reliable website. Immediately, I think you can tell that this will be a good website because the website is from the Washington Post, which of course is a well-known newspaper in the United States. Now this article is about obesity in children. 
Immediately we can tell that this is a reliable website because we see the Washington Post at the top of the page, which is a newspaper that everyone in America knows. It comes out of our capital city, Washington, D.C. We have authors right here, Susan Levine and Rob Stein. We're told who they are. They're staff writers for the Washington Post. We know who they are. We have a date and even a time when this was published, okay? This is clearly a very reliable source. This one will work. We can trust the information that's given in here. In general, here are a few sites that you want to avoid when you're doing your research. Wikipedia is a site you should really stay away from. Wikipedia isn't bad. It can give you some basic information. If you're doing some quick research for yourself and you just want some basic information about a topic, Wikipedia can, can be very helpful. Unfortunately, sites like Wikipedia, we call them open share sites, are sites where anyone can post information. So the problem is, while most of the time the information is accurate, sometimes it's not. And you can't really know if the information is accurate or not. There's really no way to check to make sure that that information is accurate. So you just shouldn't use Wikipedia if you can avoid it. You also should avoid sites like the one I showed you, AnnCollins.com. Obviously, she was trying to sell a weight loss product. That's a bad website to check out. Any website that's trying to sell you something is not going to give you reliable information. And finally, you also want to make sure that you find a site that's relevant. You might find a site that's very reliable, like the article from the Washington Post. That's a great, reliable source. But if it's not what you're looking for, if you were doing research on obesity in adults, well, the article from the Washington Post would be useless because it's an article about obesity in children. So you have to make sure that even if it's a reliable source, it's also a useful source. Now, here are some ways to find reliable sites. One way is to do a Google News search. There are many different kinds of searches that you can do through Google. If you just do a general search on Google, you'll get millions of sites in return. You can't look at millions of sites. It's just not possible. Instead, a better thing to do is to look at the Google News site. When you type in information that you're looking for there, it will give you links to newspaper articles. So automatically you know that most likely this information is reliable. You can trust the websites that you're going to. Another thing you'll want to do is check out the ODU library page. They have many search engines on the ODU library page. I've listed a few here that I think are the best search engines. I think Academic Search, Google Scholar, and LexisNexis are really good search engines to use. Um, LexisNexis is like Google News. It searches newspaper articles, just to let you know. Academic Search does a general search of all kinds of academic journals and articles. Google Scholar does the same thing as Academic Search. Those are all good sites. Let me show you how to access this website now. If you click on this link and you go to this page, this is the ODU library page. You can see it there. There's a picture of the library. What you can do once you're there is click on databases up here at the top. When you click on databases, you have all of these choices, and they have the ones that I mentioned, like Google Scholar and LexisNexis and Academic Search. We're going to try Academic Search. Now, I'm creating this video right now in my apartment, so I'm not on campus at the moment. If you're trying to access the library website when you're not on campus, you will have to sign in with your ID. So I'm going to sign in right now. Okay, now we're here. We're at the academic search page. Now you can do all kinds of searches. You can type in any information that you want. You can narrow down your field. So if you were looking for a specific title of an article, you already know what you're looking for. You can choose all of these. You can search more than one term at a time. There's all kinds of information you can do. So let's say we wanted to find obesity and, let's see, obesity and children. Sure, why not? We'll search. Now, as you can see, we have over 12,000 results. That's a lot of results. But one of the things that you can do, if you want, is you can narrow your results down. So you can only look for things that are in scholarly journals. You can only look for things where you can receive the full text. You can narrow this down. Only things from newspapers, whatever you want. You can narrow this down so that you're, you don't get quite as many results back.